This video is brought to you by Ultium. In my previous video, I built a trike electric scooter using the hoverboard Buell DC motors, 500 watts motor controllers, and 4 lead acid batteries. I connected 4 12 volts batteries in series to get 48 volts. This battery pack is too heavy, and I also have less control over its management, and moreover, the lead acid batteries are not durable, and plus, you will have to regularly check the electrolyte solution level because the lead acid batteries when dried the cells will get short circuited and it will damage all the electronics so that's why i decided to make my own 48 volts battery pack using the lithium ion battery cells as you know each lithium ion cell is 3.7 volts which means you will need to connect many cells in series to get the 48 volts and to improve the current, you will also need to connect the lithium ion battery cells in parallel. So for making these series and parallel connections, you have two choices. Number one, soldering. Number two, spot welding. If you go with the soldering, it's going to waste a lot of your time and during the soldering process, you might damage the cells because it's hard to solder the nickel strip and the battery as it needs more heat. So if you touch the soldering iron for a long time, there are high chances of battery damage and moreover, with the soldering, you will never get neat and clean connections if you are not a pro. If you go with the second choice, which is the spot welding, you can easily make these series and parallel connections without putting a lot of effort and without damaging the batteries. With spot welding machine, you will get neat and clean connections. Before I'm going to share with you the test results of my design spot welding machine, first a few words about the sponsor of this video for helping me purchase the required components and tools. This video is sponsored by Ultium. Ultium Designer is the world's most trusted PCB design system. Ultium Designer enables engineers to effortlessly connect with every facet of the electronics design process. Over 35 years of innovation and development focused on a truly unified design environment makes it the most widely used PCB design solution. With Ultium Designer, you can create PCB designs with an intuitive and powerful interface that connects you to every aspect of the electronics design process. Route it your way through any angle, tune for delay, push, slide and walk around faster than ever. Interact and collaborate with mechanical designers like never before in a photorealistic 3D design environment. If you want to get started with the Ultium Designer, you can click on the first link in the description. In today's episode, you will learn how to make this semi-automatic spot welding machine using a second-hand microwave oven transformer. While making this spot welding machine, I faced some issues which I fixed and I'm 100% sure you will also face the same issues. During my first test, I could only see these sparks. It may or may not weld the nickel strip to the battery. I was pretty confused and I had no idea for how long I had to connect these electrodes. The wheels were not good at all. So at this point, I decided to add some kind of control circuit to my spot welding machine. I added a control circuit and then all the issues were just gone. My second test was successful as I fixed all the issues. I designed my own semi-automatic transformer control circuit to control the on-off and time duration. I'm using these homemade copper electrodes and I'm still happy with the results. For professional wheels, you can order some good quality electrodes.
you can see this spot welding machine is doing just great the connections are quite clean in this video I have also explained why not to use the steel or soldering iron pits is the spot welding electrodes so here's my spot welding machine and now I'm going to explain the making and how to fix all the basic issues without any further delay let's get started The components and tools used in this video can be purchased from Amazon. The components purchase links are given in the description. Recently, I purchased this second-hand microwave oven transformer for around $15. Microwave oven transformer is the best choice for building a homemade spot welding machine. This transformer is designed for 220 volt AC and 50 Hz. While purchasing a second-hand microwave oven transformer, make sure the primary winding is not damaged. You can use a digital multimeter to check the winding. If you hear the beep sound, then it means the primary winding is good. There is also another set of winding which is the secondary winding and I don't need this winding. While cutting the secondary winding, be very careful and don't cut the primary winding otherwise your transformer will be just useless. The secondary winding is removed. Next I am going to use this 16mm wire which is 6 feet long as the secondary winding. You can see two turns on one side and three turns on the other side. So the basic setup is completed. I will use these blue color wires for supplying 220 volt AC. So our transformer basic setup is almost completed. The 220 volt AC wires are connected. The secondary winding is ready. And next we have to connect the electrodes. But before I'm going to connect the electrodes, first I'm going to check the setup. I'm going to connect these blue wires with the 220 volt AC. You don't need to be afraid you can touch these wires. Super! It's working. When you have this basic setup completed, then the next step is the electrodes selection. I know the copper electrodes are best. But I have seen guys asking about the soldering iron bits. So I am starting with these soldering iron bits and you will practically see why these bits are not good for battery spot welding. The bits are connected and the 220 volt AC on the transformer primary side is connected. The problem with these bits is that the bits itself get welded to the nickel strip. So the soldering iron bits or steel bits should not be used for the battery spot welding but you can use these steel bits for welding metal parts together. I replaced these soldering iron bits with these homemade copper electrodes and now let's do some spot welding. You can see the two batteries are connected in parallel and now I'm going to weld another battery in parallel to check if my spot welding machine is working. With this basic setup having no automatic transformer disconnection circuit you will have to be very careful and very quick because if you touch the electrodes for even two seconds you could easily damage the lithium ion battery and this is something that you really don't want. Another problem with this basic setup is that you will need the help of some other person to press the nickel strip for you to get a nice surface contact between the battery and the nickel strip. You can do it alone but it will definitely waste a lot of your time. 
Anyways, you can see I'm able to perform the welding. The nickel strip is welded to the battery, but it looks very dirty. And this is because I don't get enough time to press the other electrode and the current starts flowing. Let me demonstrate this one more time and you will get the idea. I'm going to connect these two lithium ion batteries in parallel. When I press the first electrode, the nickel strip makes a strong contact with the battery surface. Now this is the perfect moment and now look at the second electrode. I don't get enough time to press the nickel strip against the battery surface. As soon as I touch the second electrode, there are sparks but no strong welds. For the perfect weld, you will need to press both the electrodes so that there is a strong contact between the welding surfaces. This is exactly what I want but it's impossible without a fully automatic or semi-automatic control system. So for the perfect spot welding, I want two things. Number one, I want to turn on the transformer when I have pressed both the electrodes. For this, I can use a push button. Number two, I want my transformer to turn on for a few milliseconds and then it should be able to turn off by itself. I have designed this simulation for you guys so that you can easily understand how this circuit actually works. You will also see this in action after I explain how this circuit actually works. I have designed this using the Proteus simulation software which is quite popular. You can download this simulation from our website electronicclinic.com. I will provide a link in the description. Let me play the simulation so that you can easily understand how this circuit is actually working. When the entire system is powered up means when the 220 volt AC wires are connected and the 12 volt DC power supply is connected. Now at this point, even if you touch the two electrodes, it won't do the welding as one of the transformers AC input wire is disconnected using relay number two. As you can clearly see, one wire from the 220 volt AC supply is directly connected with the transformer primary winding, while the other wire from the 220 volt AC is connected with the other end of the primary winding through this relay number two. Right now, the relay number two is off, so that's why the transformer is off, and as a result, there will be no welding. Relay number one is also off. When relay number one is in the off state, it charges the capacitor through this 12 volt power supply. For the sake of this simulation, I selected the capacitor value as 1000 microfarad, while the actual value is 100 microfarad. I practically tested 100 microfarad capacitor and it worked for me. If you're using a different gauge wire and different number of turns, then you will have to use some other value capacitor. You can start with a 50 microfarad capacitor, keep increasing the value until you get the desired output. This capacitor actually controls the on time of the relay number two. As you can see, the positive leg of the capacitor is connected with the common leg of the relay number one and the other leg of the capacitor is connected with the ground of the 12 volt power supply. The ground of the 12 volt power supply is also connected with the relay coil, while the other leg of the relay coil is connected with the 12 volts through a push button. Using this push button, we can turn on and turn off the relay number one. When the push button is pressed, the relay number one is turned on and the capacitor starts discharging as it uses its charge to power up the relay number two. When the capacitor fully discharges, the relay number two is turned off and this way the transformer can only turn on for a few milliseconds. It doesn't matter if the push button is pressed for a long time, it won't do the welding. You will have to release the button to charge the capacitor and press the button again to turn on the relay number two. I'm sure you have fully understood how this circuit works. Now it's time to practically see this in action. I've done all the soldering. This is relay number one to which a push button and a capacitor are connected. This is relay number two which connects and disconnects the 220 volt AC. 
Since this spot welding machine deals with high voltages and currents, never touch these circuits and the transformer primary winding as it can be really dangerous. Never perform these tests alone if you are doing it for the first time. Wear protective gloves and in the end all I want to say is make this spot welding machine at your own risk. I'm going to place everything inside this wooden box but if you want you can order some fancy enclosure for this and make sure everything is perfectly insulated. My spot welding machine is ready and now it's time to perform the final tests. First I'm going to connect the 220 volt AC wires. Next I'm going to connect the 12 volt adapter. My foot operated push button is in place. Let's start the welding. Look at the result, it's simply amazing. This semi-automatic circuit fixed the issue. Now I can first press both the electrodes and when there is a nice surface contact between the nickel strip and the battery, then I can press the button. Support me on Patreon for more videos. I hope you liked today's episode. Like and share this video with your friends. See you in next episode and thanks for watching.